How's it going, everybody? This is episode eight. I'm building my uh, PA 14. So, if you've seen the last episode, which I hope you've been following along, I built the top deck section here where the wing bolts on, and now I'm getting it lined up. So, step one get your fuselage on the ground. It's the easiest place to work on it for height wise, and get it leveled up. In both directions, get leveled up uh, longitudinally on your datum line. Make sure your datum is leveled. And side to side is pretty easy. Just level it off the firewall too, where wherever really. They should all be pretty close to each other. Firewall is probably most important because that's your engines get bolted on. And three main, import, three main important things on a plane. Engines pointing where you want it. Wings falling in line with the engine. Tang tail is falling in line with the wing. You accomplished that and you should be good. So, level out the fuselage. All I done was put a shim under the low side. And on the back I got a jack stand. And I just slowly slid it forward until things got where I wanted it. Then I built up this crude jig here, but it works and it's leftover materials from what's left of my table so i scabbed that on there as you can see i got three points most of the jigs i've seen i didn't even look to see if the plan shows how to build the jig because i'd rather just do it myself at this point but i got three points in contact if you get four it's bit of a chase in your tail for getting it to not rock if you get three points of contact it, it'll never rock basically unless something's like well even if it's really off if you put that side three inches lower it'll just tilt and hit it and it'll stay there so that's what i done because there is a little bit of twist in this top and you're probably going to get that unless you get like a really strong jig for that holds it during the entire welding process i jigged it up pretty good for tacking it but the final weld that you do have to take it out so I did get a little tiny bit in there so this helps me work around that so I marked that up I stuck this crossbar on way too high I just had it up level with 2x4 and I just clamped it on there with a pair of big vice grips the ones you use for welding this stuff So I clamped that on there, as you can see, way up here. Laid that on, got a really rough measurement down to the datum line. It's supposed to be 25 and 1 8, or 25 and 5 8 on the front, and 24 and 1 8 on the back. So I just stuck it on there, got a measurement, realized I was way too high, did some math, figured out how far I had to drop it from the top surface then, and uh, screwed it on. Just a little bit lower, around, I don't know, a quarter of an inch, I guess, there. Because I knew I wanted to put shims in to level it up and get it perfect. So I done that. The forward and back, I measured the 33 and 3 quarters from the center firewall to the center here. And I measured back to the edge of this uh, level and just do it on both sides, check it a few times, make sure you get it good. So I done that, and the level's just in place, and hang a plumb bob from your center of your tubing down to the edge of your level, and that'll give you your fore and aft on the top section. And then basically, make sure it's square, mark off your center lines on your tubing, on your front and back, Drop that down and they should line up with your datum. And well, not only will that square it up, but that'll set your side to side. And as you can see, I just screwed some blocks in just to hold it in place. So things don't move around too much. Basically you set your side to side with the front and then you square it with the back. Run your plumb bob down. And I didn't really bother to put anything in here to hold it because it stays pretty good, honestly. So, that sets side to side, your front to back, 
and your angles of attack is set from your measurements down to your datum line and then basically all you got left to do is level it and you got to play around with your shims here a little bit because remember you do got to use the shims to get your final height from this tube down so if you go level it up it might drop it a little bit and you might have to kind of chase your tail and go back and forth until you do get level and you still retain your measurement so do that a little bit and as you can see I got front level the back is not level I knew that was gonna happen that's why I done it like this so right now if I had four points I could secure the front screw it down and then come back here with my shims and screw this down and force it in the square but when you go screwing stuff down like that it tends to move around and compress and it's a lot harder to keep everything perfect so i'm just going to do it like this weld my tubes in the front and not do the back so i'll probably put two tubes in the front and that'll hold the front really good then i'll come back i believe it's this side here it's low so or no, this side is high, I gotta come down. So this side here, I'll probably just put a ratchet strap down to there or a little come along or when I talk about little come along, I really do mean little. I mean this guy right here. I'm not talking about something giant. And I'll pull that down in the square. The front's not gonna move in because that's already welded to the fuselage. So pull that down, whatever got to come down, eighth of an inch, and then I'll weld in my aft tubes, and then it should be done. That'll hold it in place, and then just add in all the other tubes. So I'm thinking for the front, I'm going to do these ones first, or maybe these ones, I'm not entirely sure. These ones here would help. A little bit better for the forward and aft movement not happening while well, i'm at the back and then for the back i'd say i'm gonna do the rear door post ones first because i do have to pull this down and that one's almost no it's not almost 90 degrees off a nice bit but it's a lot better than this one so that'll be that one and that one on both sides more than likely and i'll probably just leave this wooden jig here for the remainder of the tubing because it doesn't get in the way of anything it's four of the uh, rear door post there so that's good and as for the angle of attack which is the uh, angle your wing bolt on relative to your flight line basically or the datum line that is a subject of conversation quite a bit on these PA-12s and 14s and even changing the PA-18 no more, really. The 12 and the 14 has an inch and a half difference between the front and the back. The front is an inch and a half higher. The PA-18 is, I'm going to say double that, I think. It's like three inches. I could be wrong, but for some reason, I think the 18 is double. It's in my head for some reason. Either way, it's more. And what that does... Is it puts the wing at a higher angle of attack all the time so when you're sitting on the ground in a three-point attitude the wing is pointing up just a little bit higher so the pa-18s have a little bit better takeoff and a little better landing because of that compared to the 12 and the 14. but in flight same thing's also happening now the wing is at a higher angle of attack relative to your engine and fuel sludge going through the air and you get a little bit more drag so you get a shorter takeoff but you also get a slower speed overall cruising so if you gain one thing you got to usually give something up so that's on wheels and skis now for me and the big reason why i didn't bother to modify this this is going to be a bush plane, so the takeoff and landing is kind of important to me. It's probably more important than the cruise speed. I really don't care. Me cruising at 90 mile an hour is still a hell of a lot faster than going through the woods on a Argo or a quad and boating and everything else. So 90 mile an hour is still pretty damn good in my opinion. 
So on floats, this is where it gets kind of interesting. Now floats, you set your float angle when you're doing your plane rigging relative to the wing. So it doesn't matter if you got an 18, 12, 14, PA 22, Cessna 150, 182, it doesn't matter. You set your float relative to the wing, so wherever the wing's at, your float's just gonna follow along, basically. So if I make this, say, two degrees more angle of attack, when I rig my float, my float is gonna be two degrees higher up also, so it's not really gonna change much. And same thing with the floats. I can rig the float so that when it's sitting on the water, my wing is at a higher angle of attack. And I'll take off shorter and I'll land shorter on the water. But same thing, when I'm cruising along in the air, if I set it to a higher angle of attack, the float is in the air at a bad angle as well and causing more drag. If I set the float to the exact same angle as the wing, it's gonna take off and land really fast, not have very good performance, but I'll cruise a lot faster. So for a float plane, which this primarily will be, it's gonna spend 90% of its life on floats and probably 10% on skis and 0% on wheels because I have no use for wheels for the terrain I'm in. If I ever move away, maybe I'll use wheels, but I can't see that happening. So for floats, I'm leaving it alone because the float angle is what does all the effect anyway. So rather than complicating things, my stair level sitting up there is kind of stressing me out a bit. So rather than complicating things and going playing around making this angle different, because that screws up your strut measurements, you can no longer use a factory PA12 or PA14 strut. You probably get away with using a PA18 strut, but the PA18 strut's got everything on them for running the cables, which I suppose you could do a PA18 style aileron cable run. But the only thing I don't know about is uh, the relation of, or the ratio, I guess, with the top section width here compared to the bottom where the lower part of your strut bolt on. Because if, say this is, I don't know, four inches wider than a PA-18, and down there it's six inches wider than a PA-18, then even if you use PA-18 struts, they're still not really gonna line up. You're gonna have to go with custom lengths. And if you use an aluminum style strut, the custom length isn't too bad, but there's a lot of stuff you gotta figure out on your own. Your strut attached fittings on the fuselage gotta be at a slightly different angle. The uh, upper attached fittings where it actually bolts onto the spar, that gotta be at a slightly different angle, so. It's a whole lot of headache for, in my case, basically no gain. It's only gonna really make a difference on skis. So for me, it's not worth it, I'm leaving it. I'll gain that extra angle of attack by putting longer landing gear on it, which will keep my prop and everything else up out of the snow, which is more beneficial to me anyway. So that's my plan for that. And I've been rambling now for 14 minutes on how to set up a top deck. So I'm pretty sure that's long enough. I think I covered everything. I covered where to set it, the angle it should be at, pretty much how to get it there. So I think that's it. I'm gonna start welding in uh, some tubing now. It might not be tonight because this is my work night actually. I work today and I gotta work tomorrow. So I'm soon gonna call her quits and I'd say tomorrow I'll be uh, out here welding up some tubes or at least cutting and fitting them. So I'll see you then. Well, as you can see, I got a few uh, tubes added in. This is the next night. I did manage to get that one there put in last night, so. This is uh, tonight's work and that one over there. And I did do what I said. I had that little come along there going from this point down to my uh, door area there, whatever you want to call that part. Hooked in here. And I level it up, tack that tube in and uh, as you can see, now it's level. So. I can go ahead now and add this one here in, and it should be good. 
And if you're paying attention, you can probably notice that uh, I said I was going to add this tube that comes down here, but it's a little more pain in the ass to do it that way because I don't know. I just like starting with the larger diameter, which is one inch. This one here is a three quarter, so I'd rather put the one inch to the one inch and continue on that way, and then I'll put the three quarter on top of this and come down. And the X brace one, I'm pretty sure it just comes a little bit inside of it. So, a little better order of going about it, I think. So that's what I've done. So I'll get this one in place now, and then uh, I'll see. I might put the two back ones in that goes from this point up to the rear attach fitting, and that should hold it four and a half pretty good. And then I'll probably work on some front ones and then come back to the back again and so on and so forth. Just keep moving around like you usually do and uh, you'll be okay. So I gotta get cutting again. Well, she's in place. I got the uh, back two tubes there put in. So now it's just to put the uh, cathedral in as in an X. That's this here and all the uh, front tubes which are the ones labeled UF so UF one two three four five six I'm not sure why they do that there's some tubes that are a pair like this one and this one here they're US 13 and then for some reason they'll have these ones as US 6 and 7 or 7 and 6 I don't know why they don't just call those US 6 and two of those US 7 and so forth uh, they're all the same measurement, so I don't know. There's a lot of funny things with these plans. But yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, putting on the top deck. So I'm gonna call this uh, done on this video, and I'll just add the remainder of the tubes. Uh, I might do a video on the how to jig up. This front X section here and this one here. But uh, well, this one here I know is what to do, but the front one is still up in the air. I gotta figure it out. And the plans is not shown as flat. So, I don't know. It gives you a measurement of eight and a half from the front of the firewall to the cluster. But in a lot of the uh, pictures I've seen people jigging up these here four tubes they do it in a straight line from here to here and actually I've seen one person even put a piece of board in or a piece of plywood and jig off of that so from by the way they he's doing it it looks like it's flat but then the drawings is not flat so I don't know, I'm gonna do some research on that and figure out what's on the go there. I can't really see any reason why putting the flat would cause any issues. The only thing that's in here really is the top of your boot cowl and it's not gonna get in the way of anything to do with the panel or anything really. It's not gonna affect the windshield, none of that. So if it is back like say an inch, cause your panel's right here. So I don't know. We'll see. When I get to that, I'll let you know. Well, yeah, that's about all the details on getting this lined up. So, if you're building one of these, you should be good to go now, really. So, yeah, as always, if you like that video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to. I appreciate it. And uh, have a good one, everybody.